next uh, error of libertarians, uh, which is uh, picking sides between deontologism and co consequentialism. Yes. And other particular uh, theories of foundations and ways of conceiving libertarianism. Yeah. Uh, so the two main ways are uh, opting for rights or liberty or libertarian rights on the one hand, or opting for utilitarianism or consequentialism or, 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 or something along those lines on the other. Now, obviously, um, Nozick in particular went one way on the right and David Friedman goes the other way on the consequences. Now, if the reason that you're doing this is you're, you're trying to justify or support libertarianism, well, as we've just heard, you can't support libertarianism. Therefore, uh, you're trying to do something that's impossible anyway. But also, if you're talking to people and they don't care about the sort of thing that you have chosen, um, you're simply going to uh, waste your time talking to them, as it were. So, for instance, if you say, uh, you explain all the rights, and somebody says, well, I'm only interested in the consequences, and you're a justificationist, you know, obviously you're going to say, well, you know, you should be interested in the, uh, in the, uh, in the rights, because the consequences don't never trump the rights. What's going on with um, rights and consequences is these are different ways of explaining libertarianism. You can explain libertarianism in terms of rights or liberty, and say, if liberty is this, then this follows and that follows and so forth, and, and, and you lay out the whole explanation. Or you can say, the consequences of libertarianism are this and this and this, and it looks like it's better for everybody if we have it. Or you can say, if we were all to have to come to an agreement as to what kind of rules we are going to enter into, without knowing in advance who we are going to be and what uh, skills we're going to have and whatever, then we are going to come up with something like I say you can take all of these approaches uh, and, they're, and what they really are is they're all different kinds of conjectural explanation. None of them are justifications. They have some assumptions and then you uh, deduce all the consequences, you know, push, pulling in any extra assumptions as you need them. And at the end of it all, you've got a sort of picture as to how you think libertarianism works. Um, having, uh, having done all of this, you might then find that the person you're talking to comes up with a criticism that you've absolutely never thought of before that has nothing to do with any of the ways that you've come up with. But the reason I, in particular, uh, focused on these two main ones, lib uh, libertarian rights versus consequences, is that there doesn't seem to be any clash anyway in terms of practice. I have a pithy quote, if I can jump in, that sort of captures this tension. Um, I was digging around on the internet earlier. I found a letter to the editor to the New York Times from 1988, but nothing changes much. So um, he's talking about a Supreme Court decision in yeah. terms of how it impacts a poor child who doesn't have, act, can't get to school very easily and maybe needs a school bus provided by the state. And at the end of his letter, he quotes Anatole Franca, uh, who said, the law in its majestic equality forbids the rich as well as the poor to sleep under bridges, to beg in the streets, and to steal bread. And it sounds like what you're saying is that that, that trade-off doesn't exist. We, it's not just a matter of having rights, and then we tur it turns out that the poor have to live under bridges, or we just look at consequences. It turns out that we have excellent consequences when we have liberty. We can have our bread, our cake, rather, and eat it too. We get liberty and excellent consequences, as it turns out. Yes, and um, 
uh, it's not a coincidence uh, that they that they come together. Um, it's the it's what I've uh, recently taken to calling the fundamental libertarian insight that I think everybody has before they choose their theory, which is that as you look at property, uh, you see it does two things at once. It it, it solves the problem of um, the tragedy of the commons. Uh, uh, it, by, and by internalizing externalities, uh, you, you get efficiencies. So it's very, very productive. But at the same time, as uh, internalizing inter uh, externalities is productive, that means that you're not interfering with other people and they're not interfering with you, which just is liberty. So the liberty and the productivity are uh, come together in property. Now that's the fu now that's the fundamental insight that I think people have. Um, having seen that that's the case, uh, some of them then forget about the liberty side of it and just go off talking about the productivity, like David Friedman does, or they uh, they they sort of focus on the rights, but. The way that classical liberals always tended to do it is they would sort of say, well, they, get, they, they always said they would be, you, you get both at once. You, you, get, you get your liberty and your property together. They, they would not, they wouldn't, they, they tended to not take sides. You know, they'd say this is the system of liberty and it works and everybody gets. Uh, and if you see countries where they try and give you, you know, the state provides, well, if the state is going to provide your uh, food, you better get into the cabbage queue and hope you get to the front of the queue before all the cabbages go. But if the state gives you no guarantee, then choose your supermarket, choose your restaurant, you know, this not having it guaranteed means we get it. Um, so the, uh, there, as I said, there's no clash. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any and every time that somebody seems to point to a clash, uh, uh, a libertarian would want to argue for government failure or state failure, not market failure. Uh, there's insufficient property rights here. People are, people's property rights are not being respected or the government owns it or the government is interfering with it. And if it didn't do that, then uh, everybody would be better off. In the second section of this essay, you mentioned that the uh, this very idea of consequences and rights and, and autonomy, all these ideas converge. Uh, that that's something libertarians, you know, in the indirect or rule utilitarian school, that's they've always sort of said that too. I mean, I don't, this doesn't seem new. Mm -hmm. J. L. Mackey said it in Ethics: uh, Inventing Right and Wrong as well. Is that various yeah. approaches tend to converge? Yeah, um, and. Uh, uh, um, I mean, there's a reason that they converge, or there's several reasons, but one is uh, if some right were uh, systematically disastrous, we wouldn't regard it as a right. The only reason that we, that we come to think of it as a right is because it seems to work so well that we come to think of it as a right, and then we're very reluctant to, to put it to one side because somebody claims, well, in this instance, um, you know, I kill this one guy to save these other five, you know, uh, nobody's going to know. And you say, ah, sounds like a slippery slope to me. Uh, there's got to be a better way. <laughs> so, so, but, but it's, there's, there's, there's consequentialism behind a lot of rights. The idea of that there's, there's, no, 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 there's just these hard rights there. They, we don't know where they came from, they, but they're just there. No, no, no. They came from the consequences. And also, uh, rights and consequences are in some way uh, inter-derivable. Inter um, you know, uh, I can't remember exactly how the argument I, I put, but I think it's in, that, um, it's in that article. So, in a sense, you can view a right in a consequentialist way and you can view a consequence. Now, for instance, if, um, uh, utility is what ought to be maximized for the sake of argument. We won't say what kind of utilitarianism. If you then 
uh, you have a right that live utility be maximized. You, yeah, there is one right. There is a right that utility be maximized. So you can't sort of leave rights behind because you can always explain those uh, uh, consequences in terms of a right. And you can do it the other way around with um, rights showing how you can bring consequences in. So really, there are, I would see rights and consequences two sides of the same coin. Rather it seems than like radically different things. Yeah. Right. It seems like some libertarians get nervous when we don't have a. This goes back to foundationalism in a way, but but a, a foundation built on rights to protect our liberty because if we think in terms of consequences alone, they think, well, that opens the door to the greedy grasping state and my bank account is no longer protected or my property rights. They're going to tell me that if there's some slug that is nearing extinction that they I can't develop my land. So I need to have this these rights built on a solid epistemological foundation. So I have a stick if not an actual physical stick, at least yeah. a verbal stick, to beat back the consequentialists who happen to be socialistically inclined or fascistically inclined or what have you. Yeah. And so that's why they're not going to take to your theory, possibly, because it's not strong enough. It's not a bulletproof vest, in a sense. Once you've derived um, what liberty is and which property rights fit liberty, um, I've nothing against the idea of rights as such. I'm not saying rights are nonsense on stilts, as Jeremy Bentham says. Rights are nonsense on stilts. I think there are rights, but what I mean by rights is nothing um, metaphysically strange. I think it, I simply mean there are things uh, where we people have a very very strong presumption that you uh, you know not treat them in certain ways and do treat them in other ways, uh, they have a moral right uh, that that is the case. And, and except for, um, you know, really weird and extreme disasters that you just don't normally see. Uh, uh, most of the um, sort of thought experiments you get in moral philosophy uh, put you in a, in, in a situation that you're never going to be in real life. So, you know, why? Why, why do you have to be able to solve the problem of what to do in this crazy situation? That just doesn't come up. Uh, <coughs> uh, as, as long as you can say that there is no good reason why people shouldn't own themselves, uh, 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 there's no good criticism. Uh, when I say good reason, I mean no good criticism. Uh, and the property that they've acquired without proactively imposing on anybody else that uh, we're better off if you if you respect that and uh, if you want to um, get them to do anything you know you've got to talk them into it or pay them or something that's the only safe way because otherwise you've got a moral hazard uh, you start undermining the whole system if you can just uh, say no 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 uh, trust me I can see the long run consequences and, uh, and I just know exactly which rights ought to be overridden and when uh, um, I think that's not at all safe. Um, so I would go along with people who say that there are strong moral rights. I think there are strong moral rights. Um, um, and, but the, one of the reasons we have these strong moral rights is because they have so many good consequences. If they had terrible consequences, why would we want them? Well, that's kind of the point of ethics in general, right? I mean, we don't yeah. we don't have ethics to make our lives worth worse. Yeah. So um, so I, I'm all for uh, strong rights, but I think I can defend strong rights better uh, uh, than somebody who simply insists that they exist and you mustn't uh, interfere with them no matter what. I I think I can defend them better by showing how interfering with them will create moral hazards. Therefore. You shouldn't interfere, and you should continue to respect them. That, and that would then be a more convincing argument, but for, for exactly the same conclusion, except they don't want to go through those stages of the argument. You say they're worried about slippery slope. Uh, I, I worry more about not convincing people. <laughs>